Now we will try to understand the legal framework for protecting the intellectual property rights in some broad manner. So now we will see the legal framework with respect to the intellectual property rights. So the first and foremost in that effort is the, the national intellectual property policy. So it is a policy that has been brought in in 2016. Good morning students, welcome back to Plutus IS. Right, so I hope you are doing well and you are doing well in your uh, preparation of preparation for prelims because only a few, day, a few days are left uh, for uh, the prelims examination early one and a half months to two months right so today is our 53rd day yesterday we have seen uh, about the ppp public private partnership and uh, fdi foreign direct investment so on those li lines only another important area or topic is the intellectual property rights that is IPR so this is also important from the point of view of prelims and as well as mains right. so first we will try and understand what is an IP intellectual property and then we will see different types of intellectual properties and also we will see the legal backing that is there that is available in India for those types of intellectual property rights right so it, intellectual property rights they are basically legal protections for the creations of the mind so remember this word creation of the mind so generally ipr intellectual property right is given to the uh, protections given for creations of the mind creation of the mind right so these include generally inventions like literary works so the people will be writing novels and books so the rights will be given for that design so certain designs will be there especially the designs that will be used in the industrial or in industrial processes and the symbols so certain symbols will be developed for uh, separating their brand from the another brand so these uh, i mean the recognition will be given for these kind of things right so it is it is a way of giving people and recognizing uh, the people uh, ownership of the people on their own creations right so it is the also the recognition for the creative works just like the uh, we own a physical property so just like that we recognize the creation of the mind uh, by a particular person so we are conferring and assuring the ownership uh, of uh, ownership to that person through the IPR intellectual property rights right so if you see the major points are important points in the intellectual property rights uh, rights uh, intangible assets so all these assets or intellectual property rights they are given to the intangible assets assets so uh, you should be knowing the difference between the tangible and intangible tangible is uh, the things which we can touch so those are tangible things intangible things are intangible things are that we cannot touch for example i have an idea in my mind so like about a process so that process cannot be touched right music is there i cannot touch the music so these kind of things are intangible things so generally ipr intellectual property rights are given for the intangible assets right uh, these are exclusive rights generally so the ip owners intellectual property owners they get exclusive rights to control uh, how their creation can be used for example copyright holder can decide who can publish their book so these are the examples however slight modification is there certain intellectual property rights are there that will not be given exclusively for a person but they will be given for a group of people for example the geographical indication is there it is one of one type of the intellectual property rights that is given for a uh, community of people so 
it is a slight difference next thing is limited time so generally the ipr is conferred for a limited time certain period of time not forever so after the expiration of the we can say that particular period of, period of time that uh, i mean whatever the property is there intellectual property is there it will become a national asset right uh, next important thing is that we should know the types of rights under registration so the intellectual property rights there are several types we should know so generally there are six type of intellectual property rights are there and uh, we will see those six types of intellectual property rights and there uh, we will see uh, example for each of that type first important uh, we can say type is patent so patent is one type of intellectual property right so this grants patents grant exclusive rights for new inventions like uh, that are inventive in nature i mean they are new in nature inventive nature and they have industrial application right for example uh, if you see an example a novel method for developing a high yielding rice variety exam uh, rice variety so it is in uh, that i mean that uh, process or product it will be granted an ipr similarly i am preparing a medical formula right or i am preparing a medicine to treat a particular disease so for that patent will be granted to me right so patent uh, is uh, two types of patents are there one is process patent and the next thing is product patent we will see that differentiation what is the major difference between the process patent and product patent later in this class only so however for now you remember this one patent is one of the most important types of the intellectual property right and next one is copyright so generally for literary and uh, literary works and artistic works also this copyrights are given right so products uh, protects the original original literacy artistic cinemat uh, cinematographic and musical works so copyrights are given to these aspects so third one is trademarks so these trademarks they protect the brand names logos and symbols used to identify and distinguish the source of goods and services right so this is for trademarks if you see the example this taj mahal logo that is branded on the t taj mahal t so or the iconic swoosh symbol on nike so these are the generally they are the trademarks for that particular product next is designs or we can also call it as the industrial designs industrial designs so they protect the visual appearance of a product like its shape configuration and pattern so for example if we see the rin soap rin soap so it has a particular shape design and a visual thing it looks like uh, looks in a uh, sky blue color or light uh, blue color so it has uh, ups and downs on its surface so it is the industrial design so if the i mean ipr is granted for that particular industrial design no person no other person can design a soap like that right so example the unique design of a bicycle frame it can also be taken as an example or the intricate pattern of a hand woven silk sari so no other person can i mean uh, take advantage of that particular design next is geographical indications so these products they protect the products with a specific geographical origin and the quality is linked linked to that place so this geographical indication said that it is generally linked to a place and the unique features of that product are linked to that particular place to that origin so generally the most famous examples are darjeeling tea so this particular tea is linked with the darjeeling area uh in west bengal so it is believed that certain specific features like aroma etc they are specific to that particular tea produced from that region only so in this way the area i mean tea grown in the darjeeling area it can use the brand of darjeeling tea and uh, uh nowhere 
that uh, any other tea product or tea for that matter can use the brand name of Darjeeling tea. Right. So if you see the example, Darjeeling tea, uh, it is known for its, uh, its distinct flavor and aroma due to the specific conditions of the Darjeeling hills. So no, I mean tea produced in any other area, it cannot use the name of Darjeeling Similarly, best example is the champagne that is produced in a particular area of the, we can say, in the France. So that champagne is uh, known for that particular area only. So no other uh, champagne produced in no other area, it can use that uh, particular name. So these are the examples. Other examples are there like Tirupati Laddu. So uh, the it is believed that the Laddu that is produced in the TTD temple, it has specific features. and. Uh, the laddu that is produced elsewhere cannot use the name of Tirupati laddu. So like this, there are several n number of examples are there. Right. So these are the several types of, uh, we can say different types of uh, intellectual property rights. Right. So if you see each type of this IPR, it has its own dedicated legal framework and the registration process. We will see the legal framework within a couple of minutes. Uh, like the patent office is there, copyrights office is there, trademarks office is there, and the designs office is there, and the GI registry, all these are responsible for administering these rights when it comes to India, right? Also, the government is also continuously working for improving the IPR administration system, including efforts to raise public awareness and strengthen enforcement mechanism. So what happens when IPR is protected? It has a lot of advantages. We will see the advantages and also there are certain disadvantages for giving intellectual property right to certain products or processes. We will also see uh, the advantages, both advantages and the disadvantages, right? So if generally we are granting intellectual property rights, that should not be a problem. But certain companies are there uh, and for certain products, they, they try to take, uh, we can say, undue advantage from the this particular intellectual property right. For example, once IPR is granted to a particular medicine or tablet, so they uh, increase the price of that particular medical uh, we can say procedure or medicine by huge percentage so then the common people especially the poor people will not be a position to purchase uh, that particular medicine or process so in this way it becomes the disadvantages on the other side the company which uh, we can say invented that procedure or medicine they make huge profits by selling that product to higher and higher Prices. So these are certain disadvantages uh, there that are there when it comes to intellectual property. Otherwise, they are beneficial in normal conditions. So by protecting the intellectual rights, we can further encourage people to innovate and create new things. Uh, so in longer uh, in in the longer term, they will be useful and they serve well the humankind, especially the people. Uh, when it comes to the developing countries like India, the intellectual properties properties are very very important, and uh, the innovations, what uh, whatever the innovations are ma made after the expiry of the uh, we can say IPR rights, they will be uh, I mean they will become the property of the nation. Uh, people of India can freely use them, right? So this is the theory or fundam uh, I mean The theory behind the intellectual property, right? So there are advantages generally we see however some companies private companies they take to uh, They try to take undue, uh, undue advantage by taking shelter under the intellectual property, right? So we will see in detail the advantages and the disadvantages of the intellectual property, right? Now we will see the enforcement mechanism and uh, legal backing for each type of intellectually intellectual property right in india so if you see the patents there is a patent acts uh, it is enacted in 1970 however there are amendments i think in 2015 there is an amendment to the patent acts so through this amendment only we have shifted from process patent to product to patent we will understand this what is meant by shifting from process patent to product patent for now you remember that there is a patent acts of 1970 patent act of 1970 70 
1970 and it is modified amended in 2015 next is copyright act it is made in 1957 it also there are recently there have been amendments to this particular act also the copyright act next are trademarks so for this there is a trade uh, the trademarks act of 1919 next is industrial designs so the for this there is the industrial designs act of 2000 next is geographical indications so the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act 2003 is there so these are the legal uh, protections that have been given to each of the uh, intellectual property right through this particular legislations right so now we, now we will try to understand the legal framework for protecting the intellectual property rights in some broad manner so now we will see the legal framework with respect to the intellectual property rights so the first and foremost in that effort is the the national intellectual property policy so it is a policy that has been brought in in 2016 so this particular policy has been brought in in 2016 and the next year immediately in 2017 there is a question in prelims about the national um, the national policy on intellectual property rights we will see the question in the end right so if we see the key objectives of this policy uh, i mean this particular policy has been brought in because there have been lot of we can say changes or new things have arisen in the intellectual property uh, rights arena so we are were unable to cope up with the, all these new changes so to subsume all these things and to broaden the regulation this intellectual new intellectual property uh, policy has been brought in right so we will see the key objectives of this uh, policy first thing is strengthen uh, strength, uh, strengthening the legal and the institutional framework so this is one of the intellectual we can say uh, one of the important objectives of this policy second thing is raising public awareness so let's say in countries like india where education is not that much penetrated the awareness about the intellectual property rights is very very less so people are doing inventions but they are not applying for the intellectual property rights so in that way to encourage entrepreneurship and to encourage the startups also startups so what happens a particular person has a very good idea and he has innovated something so to develop on that idea and to uh, start an enterprise so if that particular idea and invention is protected through the ipr so it can based on that idea a person can start an enterprise so to make all these things possible uh, raising of public awareness is very very important right so this will also help in promoting the startups in the country right next thing is promote uh, promoting innovation and creativity so whenever the intellectual property rights are there and their creations and uh, innovations are identified people will further come to uh, come into research and development and uh, they start uh, innovating so this is also being encouraged through the iprs next is facilitating technology and uh, technology transfer and uh, communication so this is also another important aspect or objective of the ipr policy next is balancing rights and interests so we have brief i have briefly explained the advantages and the disadvantages of the intellectual property rights so there is uh, one side there are huge benefits uh, for the people and the society on the long run when intellectual property rights are protected however there are uh, certain uh, we can say challenges people are taking undue advantage of the intellectual property rights so in this way there has to be a balance achieved between the rights on the other side and the interest of the society on the other side so this policy also aims to achieve this balance next is implementation and monitoring so through this uh, you can say policy the government aims to properly monitor and uh, implement the intellectual property rights policy properly so these are the major objectives of the intellectual property right 
so uh, in this effort only cpam has been established the self for intellectual property right promotion and management under the dp iit so this acts as the single point reference for implementing the policies uh, various initiatives right so before that the department of promotion of industry and intellectual uh, internal trade it is a nodal department for uh, nodal department responsible for overseeing the implementation of national intellectual property right so this type of we can say institutional mechanisms have also been created through the uh, the intellectual property rights policy of 2016 so try to remember these two agencies dp iit and cpam so these two uh, we can say institutional mechanisms are there when it comes to intellectual rights intellectual property rights in the country right so next the patents act 1970 uh, is there sorry it is amended in 2005 not in 2015 earlier i told that it is amended in 2015 no not in 2015 in 2005 so from here we have shifted from process patent to uh, product patent next is copyrights act it is a copyright acts he is made in 1957 so under this act the protection of copyright copyright uh, protection arises automatically upon creation of the original work right so under this act the copyright protection arises automatically upon the creation of the original work right so it provides also provides exclusive rights to create creators to reproduce distribute adapt and publicly perform their work so whenever uh, the other people utilize the creation they have to pay royalty to the original creator right next is the trademarks act of 1990 uh, 1919 so it protects logos symbols and phrases used to identify and distinguish the source of goods and services so for this registration with the trademarks office it is necessary for legal protection right so similarly there is the designs act of 2000 it protects the visual appearance of a product such as its shape configuration and pattern so it provides exclusive rights to design owners to control the making selling or importing of articles embodying the registered design right i have taken the example of the shape of a soap so no other person can use that particular shape for producing the other soap next are the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act of 2003 so registration with the gi registry is necessary for legal protection uh, provides it provides for right holders with the ability to prevent unauthorized use of the geographical indication right so if you see the enforcement mechanisms civil courts they handle the infringement lawsuits for ipr violations criminal prosecution is also possible for certain offenses customs uh, recordation they it helps to track the uh, track and seize the counterfeit goods and at the borders so these are the enforcement enforcement mechanisms available uh, for the enforcement of these particular uh, we can say intellectual property rights so if we see the advantages of the intellectual property rights so for creators and innovators from the point of view of creator creators and innovators if you see protection and uh, incentive so whatever the inventions they have been made by them they will be protected and there will be incentive for further doing the research and creating new things this is the one of the advantages so in this way we can kindle the spirit of innovation and also the spirit of entrepreneurship right next is monetization opportunities so people can uh, give their invention or a product whatever whatever invented by them uh, they can be sold to a particular other company or another person or they can charge royalty for uh, if their idea or in invention or innovation used by the other people so in this way there is option for monetization of their creation next is competitive advantage so strong ip protection it can provide competitive edge in the market right so in this way they can differentiate their business from the other businesses 
thereby creating a separate we can say footprint in the market next is access to capital capital so ip as, uh, assets they can be used for they can be used as a collateral to secure loans or attract investments facilitating financial growth and investments in a particular company right so these are the advantages from the point of view of the creators and the innovators so for the perspective of society if we see from the perspective of society if we see the advantages are promotion of innovation so when the ipr are protected it promotes the innovation in the society next is knowledge dissemination so whatever the knowledge creation is there it will be disseminated over a period of time to the entire society quality and safety so the trademarks they can help consumers identify the source of products and services potentially identifying or potentially indicating a certain level of quality or safety associated with particular brand next is economic growth so the society or economy can witness the growth and development in the economy uh, in the long run when ipr are protected so these are the advantages of uh, to the society furthermore the society will be benefited by possible goods and services so the essential medicines they can be developed and uh, produced they can be they can be given to the necess- necessary i mean po- people who are in necessary of those those ne- medicines so like this there are there are several advantages with the ipr right so there are similarly there are certain disadvantages when it comes to intellectual property rights so if we see the disadvantages uh, first is limited access to knowledge and technology because the knowledge or inventions that uh, that are created it is confined and they are protected so they are not freely accessible to the other people so in this way there is a limited access so in order to access that invention or product we have to pay so in sometimes the amount that needs to be paid is in huge crores of rupees are involved so this is the one of the aspects so one thing is higher cost so high costs are associated with obtaining patents and licenses for technologies developed in their own countries right this is next is limited innovation space so strong patent protection can limit the ability of developing countries to build upon existing technologies and create their own innovative solutions next is impact on essential goods so high drug prices or high drug prices or medicine prices this is the one of the major concerning area when it comes to intellectual property rights so the pharmaceutical patents it can lead to high drug prices making essential medicines unaffordable for a large portion of the population in developing countries so this major concern for public health initiative so this is a major concern for the public health initiatives so because of this reason india followed earlier india used to follow the process patent only process patent not the product patent so process patents means a particular uh, type uh, type of medicine is there drug is there for example paracetamol i am taking the example paracetamol so it has lot of importance when it comes to the public health people i mean paracetamol is being prescribed by the doctors for n number of purposes like uh, from pain killer to addressing the issue of fever etc so uh, earlier in india if patent is taken for pa- uh, paracetamol so the pa- paracetamol medicine itself is not pa- patented so if a company is found out a method to prepare this drug paracetamol only that process is patented which means another person if he tries to make paracetamol another company can or another person can also produce this paracetamol but that particular company cannot use the process that is invented or and patented by a particular company its second company the different company can use a different method to produce paracetamol there is no uh, limitation on that so 
this was the uh, method that was in vogue in the country so when process patent was there the i mean creation of medicines was not that a problem however uh, due to the we can say international pressure and uh, several other factors india has shifted from process patent to uh, product patent product patent for limited period of time let's say 20 years so india had to shift for product patent uh, that to for a limited period let's say 20 years so uh, after the product patent uh, what happened let's take the example of paracetamol itself so now let's say a company has invented the paracetamol medicine now under the product patent both the process that is used to create paracetamol and the paracetamol itself now it cannot be produced by any other country for let's say 20 20 years of time now this particular company has the monopoly of preparing and selling the paracetamol so here there is a possibility of increasing the rates of paracetamol to a huge level so people require paracetamol they have to take the paracetamol medicine whenever they get fever so they have to there is no other way they have to pay the huge prices so actually uh, we will if we take the examples of india and pakistan so india uh, i mean the people uh, in india i mean who are the authorities are there they have opened to this problem of patent uh, we can say product patent and early, earlier during the earlier periods in india only pay, process space patents have been allowed not the product uh, patents so if we take the example of pakistan pakistan, uh, pakistan has in the beginning from the beginning it was giving the product patents so for that matter uh, because of that reason, if we see the medical prices for the medicines or for the essential injections, the prices are way high when we compare them, uh, them to prices in India. So this is the problem. So if the product patent is being granted, the prices tend to be very, very high, multiple times higher than if we compare the prices where the process patent is in vogue. right this is one problem high drug prices next is access to affordable products so there is no access to uh, i mean important products uh, which are essential for the people so strict enforcement of ipr ipr on agricultural technologies and the seeds it can limit the access to affordable and essential products for farmers in developing countries so this also we have seen best case is the bt cotton so they are uh, we can i mean say the bt cotton the seeds whatever the uh, we can say seeds put, produced by the uh, company so it has acquired ipr intellectual property rights on the uh, bt cotton so in india it has given the responsibility of producing and selling those bt cotton seeds to mahindra and mahindra so because of this reason the prices of the bt cotton seeds has a huge i mean the size i mean price has been fixed at a higher level so because of these reasons the cotton cultivation has become very costly especially the input cost including seeds fertilizers etc so all these have become very costly because the seeds are patented and they are being being sold at very high prices so whenever the cotton crop fails the farmers are committing suicides similarly there is a fear that the technology companies will also create the terminator gene seeds i mean they may introduce the terminator genes into the seeds so whenever the terminator genes are introduced into the seeds the seeds produced in a particular crop the seeds uh, cannot be used for the second time so there are several challenges like this so these are the some other disadvantages whenever the patents are granted right next are challenges there are challenges in enforcement also weak legal systems that are there in several countries including india next is administration but administrative burdens will be there to enforce and recognize these intellectual property rights right so if we see the with the specific context of india also there are certain problems there are several problems right 
so we have to balance the one side the interest of the people and also on the side other side interest of the creators we have to balance both the things right so if we see the recent trends in the intellectual property rights arena so next uh, first thing is rise in intangible assets so this thing is happening there is a rise rising trend when it comes to intangible assets this can be seen so the digital age revolves around the intangible assets like software data creative content online etc so traditional ip frameworks may need adjustments to effectively protect these assets in online environment so this thing is a next is artificial intelligence and intellectual property so ai is creating new inventions and the creative works so the question of who owns these creations uh, the programmer the ai or a combination so this is also a question and how they can be patented is a complex issue demanding legal solutions so this thing is also there so uh, recently there is another development that certain creators artists they have uh, i mean filed a suit saying that so to teach the ai artificial intelligence their creatives have creative we can say innovations have been used like the novels the music so it has been uh, the existing things have been used to teach the ai to further create the things so now the all the artists they have filed a suit saying that to teach the ai they i mean their creations have been utilized so that is illegal in this way their uh, intellectual property rights have been violated and for that they have to be compensated and further their creations shall not be used for teaching the ai so in this way there is a lawsuit also filed so it is leading to uh due to the new uh, day to day changes it is leading to these kind of controversies also next is data protection and ownership so the vast amount of data generated in today's world it raises questions about the ownership and the control so data privacy regulations and the new forms of ip protection for specific types of data are emerging next is blockchain for ip management so block te- blockchain technology you know very well it is being utilized for protecting the intellectual property rights also right so it is a transparent way to record ownership and track the use of intellectual property right next is global versus national focus this is also one of the emerging areas apart from that open source and collaborative models this is also one of the emerging area next is ip in the sharing economy so the rise of sharing economy it raises questions about the ip ownership and the licensing in the context like ride sharing or online market places so legal frameworks may need not may need to adapt to address these new business models right so these are some of the emerging arenas in the intellectual property rights next you have to understand the process patent versus the product patent i have uh, given the example also earlier we used to follow the process patent i mean we uh, used to protect or recognize the process in making a particular product now after the 2005 amendment we have shifted to a limited product uh, we can say intellectual property right or payment patent right so both the process patent patent and the product patents they fall under the umbrella of intellectual property rights protecting the inventment so if we see the process patent protects the method or way of doing something that results in a specific product outcome or material it focuses on the steps sequence and the techniques that are involved in the process examples include a new method of brewing beer a unique way of purifying water or a novel technique for manufacturing a particular type of fabric so these are protected under the process patent so any other person can prepare beer but he should not use the particular brewing method he can uh, employ a different brewing method so this is the example next is product patent so it protects the physical object or end result created by the specific process so for this also i have given the example we will see 
some other examples examples include a new type of self healing paint it has been created and a revolutionary design for a solar panel or a unique formula for a long lasting battery so all these are uh, product patents so this patent uh, particular patent or uh, type of patent product patent it focuses on the characteristics composition structure and the functionality of a of the final product so no other person can uh, make a similar product once it is patented right so this is the difference i have explained the difference also uh, for developing countries like india where majority of the people are poor so the process patent is much much better when we compare to the product patent however the inventors who are there especially the inventors uh, from the developed countries they demand a product patent because they want to make uh, profits out of their inventions so they demand that uh, product patent shall be given so uh, so balance balancing this thing india has shifted from process patent to uh, product patent that too for a limited time in the 2005 right now we have to understand several disputed areas in the uh, intellectual property rights or when it comes to patents so there are two areas one thing is evergreening of patents this is one disputed area and very much a problematic area for developing countries like india and another another thing is to address the aspect of we can say evergreening of patents or whenever the products are very high the price of a patented product is very high in the compulsory licensing process it is there in india so it is a india has a solution whenever the product is not available i mean the patented product is very very essential uh, let's say if it is a critical medicine and it is not available uh, affordable by the for the people at reasonable rates the government can uh uh propose a compulsory licensing that the particular company which has the patent it has to issue the license for an indian company so that the indian company sta can start uh making that particular product for in this example the medicine so that it is uh, affordable and available to the people of india right we will see about that so evergreening of patents so what happens in this evergreening of patents it refers to the strategies used by the patent holders to extend the effective monopoly period for their invention beyond a standard standard patent term that is generally 20 years in india for example if a medicine is there i am taking the famous example on which the case has happened glevac is there so it is a medicine uh, that is to treat the cancer patients glevac medicine it is a i mean it is prepared by uh, a company uh, i mean multinational company so after uh, before the expiry of the 20 years i mean when the patent is go, i mean the period is ending about or about to end this 20 year years period the company has made minor changes only small small changes to, to this particular patent and it said that we have invented a new medicine right and in that way it tried to acquire patent right for 20 more years 20 more years so the case i mean however the government of india refused to recognize this uh, minor changes and uh, uh, the case went to supreme court the particular company has challenged the decision of the government that not recognizing this uh, medicine as a new invention it went to the supreme court and the supreme court also accepted the stand of the government and uh, the supreme court ruled that there are no uh, major changes in this uh, medicine including the therapeutic value i mean there is no major change in the treatment uh, i mean features of this particular medicine hence because of this reason it cannot be granted a uh, further new patent this to this particular medicine so in this way the evergreening of this medicine particular case glevac it has been prevented so the evergreening of the patent which means so after 
uh, I mean, whenever the expiry period of a particular product is approaching near, the particular company will try to extend that uh, patent right furthermore by doing minor changes to that product. Products. In this way, they want to hold their strang- stranglehold uh, uh, upon that product, thereby garnering further profits. Right. So this is the met- a case of evergreening of patents. So this have to be prevented and fought actively to protect the interest of the people. Right. Next is compulsory licensing. So this is the method inventive uh, method invented by India, and uh, there is a provision in the Patent Acts for uh, issuing compulsory licensing. So whenever a product which is essential that is not available at affordable prices for the people of India, so the government can order. Uh, for issuing a compulsory license by the multinational company to an Indian partner so that that Indian partner can produce that particular medicine or product at the affordable prices so that the medicine will be available to the people at the affordable prices. So till now, uh, only once the compulsory licensing has been ordered by the government uh, in India, right? So mechanism, this is a legal provision that allows the government to authorize another party to produce patented inventions without the consent of the uh, patent holder. Right. So compulsory licensing is generally or usually granted under specific cir- circumstances such as public health emergencies, uh, right, authorizing production of generic drugs to address the medical shortage. So several. Uh, I mean conditions can be like this so however in the history of India only once the compulsory licensing has been ordered ordered right this is about the compulsory licensing right so now we will see uh, some questions that are uh, previously asked from this topic first question it is asked in 2023 just before uh, just concluded exam the question is consider the following uh, consider the investments in the following assets. The uh, options are brand recognition, inventory, intellectual property, mailing list of clients. So how many of the above are considered as intangible investments? So apart from inventory, inventory is an investment in inventory is a tangible investment. Right. So the rest of the three uh whatever the investment going into rest of the three aspects brand recognition intellectual property rights and uh, mailing list of clients they are inter- investments in intangible things uh, things into things which we cannot touch so the correct option is option c only three right so in this way the intellectual property rights aspects may be clubbed into other aspects and it can be asked Next question is, it is asked in 2017, the question is, with reference to the national intellectual property rights policy, consider the following statements. Uh, the statements are, it is it retain, re, sorry, the policy reiterates India's commitment to Doha development agenda and the TRIPS agreement. So when it comes to inter- multilateral organizations, trip, uh, TRIPS agreement is also one of the important agreements. Remember, and this statement is also uh, uh, correct statement through the policy of 2016. India reiterates its commitment to Doha development agenda and the TRIPS agreement. Second statement, the Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion uh, is the nodal agency for regulating intellectual property rights in India. Yes, we have seen this. So, DI, PP, (laughs) it is the nodal agency for uh, regulating and uh, maintaining the intellectual property rights in India. So, both the statements, statement 1 and 2 are correct. The correct option is option C. So, option has to be there, D, neither 1 nor 2. However, it is not uh, correct. So, correct option is option C, both statement 1 and 2 are correct, right? So this is all about the intellectual property rights. I hope you have gained some important information through this lecture, right?
थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग द लेक्चर दिस इज इट फॉर टूडे सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम एंड टेल देन है गुड डे सी नेक्स्ट टाइम